All right, in this video, I'm gonna be repairing this 15 inch mid 2010 Apple MacBook Pro. Now, this machine has a very, very, very common issue that these machines have, and it relates to the video circuitry of the system, specifically for the dedicated video card. Um, and as you can see here, the system is booting up, um, and once it finishes starting up, uh, you will be able to see uh, what the issue is. Now, um, before it actually exhibits the issue, I do want to say that this issue is not a video card issue, um, as a lot of people may think with these machines. Um, these machines actually have really good GPUs that almost never fail. I've actually never seen one fail. However, there is some circuitry in the machine that fails all the time, which causes a sy symptoms that appear to be a video card failure. Now, uh, it will take quite some time to boot up here because um, it did just actually exhibit the problem and kernel panic on me. Uh, but in a second here, it should boot up. There it goes. Um, so I'll let it get into the login screen here. And a lot of times at this point, it'll crash and kernel panic. So um, let's let it boot up here. You can see we've got a cursor on the display right now. And we're in a login screen. Let's see if we can manage to log in here. It got farther than it did the first time. And yes, the screen is cracked. Uh, this board was actually um, sent in to me by somebody to repair. Um, and this is just my testing setup with a uh, cracked display, but that's no big deal for testing, of course. Um, so let's go ahead and let this log in here. And actually, you can see the uh, last kernel panic here. I'll go ahead and show you what that kernel panic log said. Um, so yeah, you can see got a bunch of graphic stuff in the uh, kernel backtrace right there. Um, so yeah, obviously, something related to the graphics uh, is having a problem. But like I said, it is not the GPU. So let's just go ahead and open up system preferences here. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to use the dedicated video card because um, it is currently on the integrated graphics. And yes, this is a uh, mechanical hard drive, so it is quite a bit slow, especially after uh, kernel panic the first time. All right, finally we're in here. And let's go ahead and select automatic graphics switching. All right, so it did actually switch to, to the uh, integrated graphics card successfully. So let's go into about this Mac here. So yeah, we can see it is now on the integrated graphics. Um, so now let me go ahead and uncheck this. And there we go. So you can see that it kernel panicked. Um, the system's about to reboot now. And uh, go ahead and show you that real quick. So yeah, there's the system. So yeah, there it is. Um, as you can see, um, that is the message you get when a kernel panic occurs. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and get that unplugged. And uh, then we'll go ahead and remove the logic board from the system and uh, begin to repair it. And I will show you uh, what is actually causing this issue uh, once we get the board out of the machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the board out and open the schematic and we'll take a look at what's causing this issue. Alrighty, so here you can see that I've gotten the schematic open for this board and uh, this is what is causing our problem. It is actually a bad capacitor and it is this capacitor right here, C9560. Now this is on the output side of the IC that produces uh, this rail right here which is the uh, um, frame buffer rail for the GPU, you can see uh, it is right there, it says it right there, um, and that is controlled by U9500. Um, so basically what happens is this capacitor right here is under way too much load uh, for what it can handle, um, and as such it causes it to fail. So when this happens, it'll just cause the exact problems that you saw uh, when I was demonstrating it. It'll just kernel panic when switching to the dedicated graphics card. Um, or it will just not boot up at all in some cases. Um, so yeah, as you can see, that is a 1.8 volt output. 
um, and uh, yeah we're gonna go ahead and replace this capacitor so if we go ahead over to the board view and search for C9560 uh, we can go ahead and locate it on the board uh, so C9560 right there um, and you can see that it is right there on the board so if we go ahead and take a look at the board you can see that C9560 is this capacitor right here so that's exactly what we're going to be changing in this video now I'm not going to actually replace it with a capacitor of a similar size um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a much larger capacitor uh, that is able to actually withstand the conditions under which uh, it's running in this part of the circuit um, and therefore it will not fail in the future so I'm going to get a capacitor that's about twice as big maybe even a little bit bigger um, and get it onto those two pads right there so that might take a little bit of a hack job to get done um, but I do think it is possible and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give it a try in this video so I'm gonna go ahead and get my camera mounted in a tripod here and we'll begin the process of removing a donor capacitor from another board um, and then soldering it onto this board so I'm gonna go ahead and resume the video and we will resume the process of soldering uh, this capacitor Alright, so as you can see, I've got another board out here. Uh, this is actually the same type of board uh, as the one I was am, uh, actually repairing. Uh, however, this one is one of my donor boards and it has a lot of stuff missing off of it. So, the capacitors that we're going to use to replace that one capacitor are these right here. Or one of these, of course. Um, now, these are the same spec capacitor, 330 microfarad, 2 volts. However, as you can see, they are physically way larger than the original capacitor. Now we can actually take a look at what that original capacitor was um, on this board um, and you can see it is right here. So like I showed before that is C9560 um, and we're going to be replacing it uh, with one of these capacitors. So I'm pretty sure this will fit on. This actually has a second uh, pad for the ground so it should be able to stretch over uh, those two pads uh, where the smaller capacitor was. Um, so I think this should work just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by first applying some flux to the capacitor um, before we remove it, of course. Um, go ahead and make sure my heat is good on here. Alright, and that should do it. So let me go ahead and grab my hot air real quick here. And now we can begin the process of desoldering that capacitor. So here we go. Make sure the uh, hose doesn't get in the way of the camera here. Alright, and as you can see, the capacitor is off there. Um, so you can actually see how the pads are on this capacitor. Um, if we go ahead and flip it over here. So you can see that there are three pads on the bottom. There's one uh, positive pad, which is on this side, of course. Um, and then the middle one and the bottom one are both ground. So I think uh, th this top... Yeah, so I think this top uh, pad and the center pad here should uh, make contact with the two pads uh, of the original capacitor. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the other board and uh, we'll begin the process of removing the capacitor off that board and then soldering this new capacitor on. So go ahead and grab the board. Our capacitor is in a different spot on this one. So there it is right there. So of course the first thing we'll go ahead and do is apply some flux. Like so. And go ahead and desolder and remove it. All 
Alrighty, and as you can see, we have removed the old capacitor. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and apply some fresh solder to those pads um, just so we get a little bit better uh, soldering when we put the new capacitor on. that on, I'm going to go ahead and take my solder wick and clean them off. Just like so. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and just apply a small amount of new solder. All right, there we go. So now we'll go ahead and apply a little bit of fresh flux to that take our new capacitor and solder it on. So hopefully it'll fit on there all right. Let's see. Make sure the pads line up and it looks like they will. Alright, and that looks to be on pretty well. Um, so of course I will check this for shorts and make sure that the two pads are not in, uh, bridged underneath the capacitor, but I doubt that would be the case. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and get this flux all cleaned up, um, and then I'll go ahead and check it for shorts. So I'm going to go ahead and resume the video. Alright, so as you can see here, I got most of the flux cleaned up. I will of course clean it up a little bit more uh, once I take the heat sink off to repaste it. Um, but I've got my multimeter here in continuity mode, um, so let's go ahead and put one probe on either side of the cap, and we're not shorted, so that means we were successful. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to uh, put the board back in the case, turn the system on, and we'll go ahead and give it a quick test. So I'm going to go ahead and get it assembled and resume the video. All right, so as you can see here, I've gotten the machine assembled and booted back up into the OS. Um, so now we can go ahead and take a look at it. So you can see we're back in the energy saver preferences where we were before where it crashed. Um, so let's go ahead and disable the dedicated graphics. And uh, we'll go ahead and see if it's running on integrated now. And as you can see it is, we are running off the Intel HD graphics. Let's go uncheck that. You can see it switched back to dedicated just like it should have. Go ahead and check about this Mac again. You can see we're now on the GeForce GT 330M. Let's go ahead and check about this Mac. And yep, we've got the display listed under the 330M. Um, so yeah, it seems to be working just fine. Um, let's go ahead and switch it a few times. Every time you see the uh, cursor flash like that, uh, that means the uh, GPU is switching. So yeah, as you can see, on the dedicated, no crashes, even doing graphically intensive things, like the launch pad. And it's working just fine. So that was the successful repair of this mid-2010 15-inch Apple MacBook Pro. Um, like I said, this is a very common issue with these machines. Um, it's also an issue with the 17-inch machines because they use uh, the same circuit, of course. Um, so yeah, if you ever see one of these that kernel panics randomly, uh, especially when switching graphics cards, um, that is an indication of a bad capacitor, uh, as I showed you and replaced, not a bad GPU. So please do not heat up the GPUs. Heating up a GPU is never a good solution. Um, I just really hate it when I see people do that, especially on these machines when the GPU 
isn't even the issue in the first place. So please, if you get a, if you've got a mid 2010 15 inch or 17 inch MacBook Pro uh, that's kernel panicking when switching to the dedicated graphics or um, not showing an image on the internal LCD at all, um, that is a sign of that capacitor failing. So with that. That has been the successful repair of this mid-2010 15-inch machine, uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video.